When I first started out in Warframe, I was so jealous of my friends doing tons and tons of damage while I still had trouble getting to the extract point on time. One of them told me, go to the market, buy a blueprint for the heck shotgun, make it and go nuts. Little did I know back then that this weapon was gonna carry me all the way to mastery rank 10. Hey guys, hello and welcome back, as always my name is Lazar and today we're talking about the standard version of the heck shotgun. With a mastery lockout of only 4, I believe this one to be the ideal starter shotgun. As such, this video will take a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of information here that most of the time simply gets skipped over. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the heck shotgun. Firstly, let's check out how the weapon handles without any sorts of mods equipped. And I'm mashing my button right now just so you can see the maximum fire rate and how it aligns to the recoil on this weapon. It has 4 barrels and it's gonna do 4 shots after which we're gonna reload. And the reload I believe is about 2 seconds. Let's jump into the stats so we can talk about mod capacity, the default stats of the weapon and what you will need to do to get the most out of your heck. First and foremost, mod capacity is 60 out of 60 and your mod capacity might be only 30. You amplify this by jumping into actions and installing an Orokin catalyst. This can be found from alerts, invasions or if you're lucky from the daily sortie. But you probably might not have access to the sortie right now. Is it worth putting an Orokin catalyst in your heck? Yes, it's definitely worth. This is a potent early game weapon. Next, let's talk about this number right here. This means that the weapon has been format a total of four times. You can get forma blueprints by opening up relics. And yes, it is worth forma in your heck at least a couple of times. For the build I'm recommending you, you will need a total of four. Again, you jump into actions, you hit polarization, and then you can polarize a slot. The heck will need to be maximum level of 30, and after you forma, it will be down to level nothing. So you're gonna have to re-level it after each and every forma. Other than that, you can swap polarity of these things. If you don't like the arrangement of the symbols, if you wanna put this here, then definitely you can do that. This costs nothing, and it's extremely useful when we get to combining elemental damage types. And that's enough for that. Let's talk about the default stats. Accuracy is 9.1, which for a shotgun isn't bad at all. This is the same accuracy as the Tigris Prime, a much uh, higher level shotgun. Critical chance, unfortunately, it's only 10% and the critical multiplier is 2.0x. These are low multipliers. Ideally, heck shouldn't be built for crit chance. Fall off is standard. The fire rate is not bad, 2.17. Magazine capacity, as you saw there, is 4. And this has been the bane of my existence while leveling. These only 4 shells. Noise alarming because it is a shotgun, the reload is not that bad actually. 2.0 is actually a pretty good reload time, the problem is the magazine capacity is so low. That's why reload is kinda gonna get a bit annoying. Status chance is 25% and this is kinda where the heck shines. And the trigger of course is semi. Next you're gonna see the default damage that the weapon does. You have impact, puncture and slash. All of these damage types have different effects on the target. Now this is just a flat amount of damage. It's not necessarily the status effect all of these can do. And I suggest you look those up but I don't want to make a one hour long video. So there's that. Good, let's slap on some mods. As with any weapon, the first thing we should do is just slap on some damage. And don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you to put prime this and prime that. We're gonna stay away from any fancy mods today. We're gonna keep it cheap, we're gonna keep it affordable and efficient. First thing you should put on, like I said, is damage. First mod will be uh, point blank, which is plus 90% damage. And the second damage mod that I recommend you guys is gonna be blaze. Again, all of the mods in the build will be affordable, cheap, or easy to obtain. Blaze will give us 60% damage and it will add our first elemental to the weapon, 60% heat. Now heat, electricity, cold, and so on and so forth are elemental damage types. The impact puncture and slash are physical damage types. And that's gonna do it at least for now, for the damage. Next, what we want to do, especially on a pellet-based shotguns, because you will see further through the game, there are other types of shotguns as well, not just pellet-based, is gonna be Hell's Chamber. Hell's Chamber will add 120% multi-shot. By default, the heck has seven pellets per fire. If we further augment that with multi-shot, that means we're firing more pellets, therefore more damage. Currently in Warframe, multi-shot is a very, very big deal. 
The next is gonna be Scattered Justice. Now this is a mod you get from a syndicate. It's a very special and powerful mod that is mandatory to the heck. Now you may not have the syndicate Steel Meridian which sells this one. If you do not have that, ask a friend or try to buy it off the trade chat. The maximum price, the absolute maximum price you should pay for Scattered Justice is 10 plat. But if you find a nice guy, you can get it for 5 plat. Say you're new, say that's all the plat you got, come on. 200% multi-shot, so many people, so many users of shotguns would love to equip this mod, but only the heck can use it and that's it. You get plus 200% multi-shot, that's a huge amount, and plus one justice. The justice is a syndicate effect. Whenever you get about 2000 affinity, I think it was 2000, I'm not completely sure on that, and affinity by the way is just a way, a fancy way of getting XP, kinda. You will do an AOE blast, which will do a whole lot of damage, it sounds boom, and it's absolutely awesome, and you cannot control exactly, exactly when this one blows, but you can track the progress of your proc, and I'll show you that just a little bit later. And that's gonna do it for those. Next, we have a couple of options. We should be looking towards amplifying with elemental damage types. And this is when things kinda get a little bit fuzzy. Like you saw before, we do have our heat. You saw that the numbers kinda increased here and you may not know why that is. Well, I'm gonna tell you. The damage from Blaze amplifies everything and the multi-shot from uh, Scatter Justice as well as Hell Cha Hell's Chamber amplifies all the damage, of course, because again, more pellets, more damage, but it also amplifies the status chance. Next, I'm going to explain to you how status chance works on pellet-based shotguns because there's a bit of a misinformation running around and I want you to be clear on it. On pellet-based weapons, such as shotguns, handheld shotguns, and so on and so forth, you're gonna need a 100% status chance before multi-shot effects. If you don't do that, then your status chance simply gets divided among your pellets. So let's say you have a 100% status chance with multi-shot, but you fire, I don't know, 100 pellets. That 100% status chance is gonna get divided among your pellets, so actually your pellets will have a very low chance to actually apply status. So in order to get the weapon to a true 100% status chance that every pellet applies a status, you're gonna need plus status effects. So let's talk a little bit about that. Status effects. Mods such as Frigid Blast, Scattering Inferno, Toxic Barrage and Shell Shock, which are not a part of this build. I'm simply exemplifying. Plus percent based status chance. This is true status chance for a pellet based shotgun and if you can get a shotgun to a 100% status chance before multi-shot effects then and only then will each pellet apply status. Multi-shot can trick you on pellet based shotguns. Very well, let's continue. We said something about elemental damage types. Then we saw, when adding elemental damage, one must take into account where are you going and what are you fighting. Because you're gonna be swapping these mods in and out. We're gonna take the example of the Grenier. The Grenier are the toughest targets you will meet in Warframe. Yes, the guys with the big guns and all whatnot. The infested, the creatures, so to speak, <laughs> those guys you don't need to worry about. Mostly, they take a lot of damage from everything. And the cor against Corpus factions, the guys with the big shields, well, against them you want to build gas if you want to deal damage directly to their health and bypass their shield. Or if you want to nuke down their shield, you want to build magnetic. Let's try to combine a couple of elements just so I can give you an example. Again, we're taking the example of the Grenier. In order to apply the uh, corrosive effect which does extra damage against heavily armored targets such as the Grenier, we're gonna need two elements. First of all, it's gonna be electricity and we're gonna be adding charged shell. Charged shell is 90% electricity and as you see there, uh, here, something happened. Our heat damage just became radiation damage. That is the combination, and it shows you over here, next to radiation, the combination of electricity together with heat. You might be wondering, well, okay, what if I add even more? I'm, am I gonna get new damage types? No. The comb combination of elementals are only two by two, and the priority is from top left to bottom right. Let me exemplify exactly what I mean. Let's pick up toxin. Toxin does uh, extra damage usually against heavily armored targets and we're gonna put it over here. As you saw, we did keep our radiation that we got earlier, but now we got extra Toxin. However, if I take Toxin and I put it in front of electricity, boom, I get corrosive damage and then the heat is kind of like, let's say, all alone. So again, priority from top left to bottom right. And the combination between Toxin and electricity will co make corrosive damage, which is what we are interested in. 
Next we're gonna further amplify the damage. Now you do have a couple of options when it comes to the final two slots and I'm gonna recommend you use whatever you have handy but I'm also gonna tell you what gives the best results. You can go on ahead and just add a 90% mod if you so desire. If we add cold now it's gonna make the combination with heat. So now we got Blast and Corrosive. Now Blast doesn't do a whole lot of damage against heavily armored targets. So the combination of Blast against the Grenier, which we talked about, is not exactly ideal. So if you want, you can add even more heat. That wouldn't prove a damage loss against heavily armored targets again. The 90% damage mod for heat is gonna be Incendiary Coat. You can max this one. It will be the same as Contagious Spread and Charge Shell and it will give you 90% heat and we can further amplify the heat value of our shotgun however you do have two additional options which I like more and in testing proved a tad better let's talk about more multi-shot like I said before on pellet based shotguns multi-shot is definitely very important you have this mod vigilante armaments which will add another 60% multi-shot now compared to hell's chamber or scatter justice it's not a huge amount but again we are talking about a pellet based shotgun a good amount of pellets on the hex 7 by default so this will prove beneficial you'll also see you have a set bonus one out of six five percent chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons i'm not gonna go into how critical and this amplification works i'm gonna tell you that you're not gonna get a lot of benefit from the set bonus because we're not going to be critting a lot with the heck because again our critical chance is only 10 percent so this is one of the options another option will be vicious spread now vicious spread will add 90 percent damage which is awesome again this is 90 percent to everything not to just a single element with the 90 90 mods and 60% spread and you might believe hey that's great right I'm getting a bigger spread well not necessarily in adding a bigger spread you are losing accuracy but it is a shotgun and the accuracy of 5.5 on a shotgun is not really all that bad again a shotgun is not necessarily made for sniping unless it's the Tigris Prime but we're gonna talk about that in a different video so these are two additional options you have for damage which are superior from my point of view than adding another 90% mod and again the 90% mod should be swapped in and out depending on who you fight don't forget about that because certain factions do have resistances to certain types of damage and you can find that info on the wiki however we're gonna drop one of these guys i'm actually gonna drop vigilante armaments because out of all of these out of these two this proves less damage and i'm gonna recommend you a commodity mod let's call it like that a quality of life mod we're gonna take a look at chilling reload now chilling reload will add 60 percent cold and 40 percent reload speed now i did say that the reload for the heck is quite good at two seconds and uh bringing that down by 40 percent will mean 1.4 the problem with the heck and like i said the bane of my existence while playing with it was that magazine clip size of only four that is terrible exactly when you wanted to kill a target it starts reloading by bringing the reload down it alleviates a little bit of the problem and this will give you real gameplay scenario dps the fact that you can reload faster means you're getting more shots off means more dps if you want to go however for uh seeking fury that's also a good option if you have it handy seeking fury will only give you 15 percent uh, reload speed but it will give you some punch through now punch through means that your pellets will go through the initial target and keep traveling for plus 1.2 plus 1.2 what fish uh, yes i know they don't tell you uh it's kind of 1.2 meters think it something like that so theoretically you're gonna be able to one shot three four five enemies in a line something like that depending on how close they are clumped up together or maybe you have a nidus or a Vauban that puts them all together nicely for for you then seeking fury is gonna be definitely efficient however if you choose to put on seeking fury you're gonna have to form out one more time that's gonna be up to you my recommendation for real gameplay scenario damage is gonna be chilling reload now we got everything we need let's try the build out and see what kind of results we'll get and we're gonna do a real life scenario let's call it like that we're gonna spawn in corrupted heavy gunner corrupted units you might find them when you do relic missions have more armor and health than regular units for the hell of it we're spawning an ancient healer as a representative of the whatever infested and elite crewman as a representative of corpus faction and let's simulate these guys and I seen some comments like, are oh, because they're standing still aren't they taking extra damage? No, they're not. Just a quick answer there. So these are the elite crewmen 
of the Corpus faction and you will see that these guys will pose absolutely no threat to you and your heck shotgun. The enemies I have spawned are level 60, realistically speaking, and mastery rank 4, you're never gonna get to see level 60s, not really. I barely see these guys sometimes in Kuva when I stand at least 30 to 40 minutes, so there's that. As you saw there, the uh, corrupted heavy gunners took two shots to hit. One, two. So these guys are a little bit tougher. One, two. And the reload, as you saw. Again, real gameplay scenario damage. Now let's take a look uh, for the hell of it at the ancient healers. These guys really don't matter at all. Like I said before, the uh, probably the wimps when it comes to resistances are the um, infested. So as you can see, the build is quite potent. Realistically speaking, again, these are targets you will be fighting. Now let's amp up the anti. You might be curious. Well, I've seen test with level 100 and okay. If you actually believe you're going to be facing, I'm going to spawn the max level I can and that's going to be level 115. We're going to be changing up the build just a little bit, nothing too major. Now, I do not recommend you guys drop chilling reload simply because, again, you are dropping real gameplay scenario damage. However, if you want the most amount of damage you can do per shot with a single shot to an enemy, then you can drop chilling reload, deal with the extra downtime because of the longer reload, and you can add even more multi-shot vigilante armaments and again we're doing this just for the sake of presentation we spawned our level 115s and let's see the difference we won managed to one shot these ancient healers from the back when they were 60 what about now oh uh oh not a one shot anymore as you can see it kind of drops them to something like 50 60 percent however if we get a headshot you will see that it's still mostly an, an, a non-issue but again the infested are mostly wimps they're the easiest things you can kill in Warframe. But what about the elite crewmen of the Corpus faction? Still mostly a non-issue. However, when we get to the Corrupted Heavy Gunners, the representatives of the Granier faction, you'll see that a lot has changed. Four shots in this guy's head from point-blank range, so I'm not missing anything. And he's down to what, 50? 60%? That, the flame effect, you see, that is a status effect from the from the heat damage and the green things around him, that are the corrosive effect that we made. So you see, it took like, what, 7 to 8 shots to kill that one guy. Like I said before, those are the toughest guys you will meet in Warframe. Now before I go, if I may, a couple of more advices, some real down-to-earth advices. Don't rush it. In all honesty, there's no reason to rush your experience with Warframe to seem some sort of endgame because you won't find much of any. As for the heck shotgun, this is the first real gun you're gonna be able to get your hands on. Later on in the game, at Mastery Rank 7, you have another option for an awesome shotgun if you're into that. Let me show you the Sobek shotgun. I'm not particularly a fan of this one, but you can get this one at Mastery Rank 7 and it's definitely worth the pickup and the build. If by that point you are bored of the heck or something. Some people will tell you to build a heck for status and that is uh, completely up to you. However, this weapon cannot reach 100% status chance through 100% status chance again before multi-shot effects unless you have a Riven for it. The Riven disposition for the heck, unfortunately, it's only one because, well, the Vake or the Big Brother uh, is very popular. So I don't recommend you guys mess with Rivens. In all honesty, it's simply not worth it, especially considering the disposition, especially that while starting out, Rivens are massively overkill and you shouldn't really have access to them anyway but there is another route you can go if you really want to reach that 100 status chance what the heck there is a mod called nano where the hell are you there we go nano applicator now nano applicator will give you plus 90 status chance while aiming for nine seconds awesome right now if we use nano applicator and the 60 60 mods which i will outline right now again we're doing this just to get some information out there now the 60-60 mods are Shell Shock, Toxic Barrage, Scattering Inferno, and Frigid Blast. Now these 60-60 mods, they're called like this for a reason, will add 60% of an element and 60% status chance and you will see that our status chance now just with these mods equipped jumped up to 85%. But again, between having 99% on a pellet based shotgun and 100% true status chance is a world of a difference. Again, the status chance gets divided amongst your pellets unless it's 100% before multi-shot. 
So if you guys were to add shotgun savvy because some of these were wondering, no, that's still not enough to get it to a true 100%. What you are going to need is nano applicator. The reason why I did not recommend uh, nano applicator in a beginner guide because this one costs an arm and a leg. You want to get it from the trade chat, you're looking at 200 plat. Easy. If you want to go that route, then by all means you can do so. I, however, do not recommend it. And that's gonna do it for the build. Hopefully I managed to answer all of your questions. But if I miss something because I'm human, by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer each and every question. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon build, by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I give you my word, I will read each and every comment. But until next time, guys, bye-bye.